As you progress in this hobby, you stumble over various equipment, methods, ideas. I recently listened to a podcast about astrophotography. And now I'm ready to progress. To extend my knowledge of this amazing hobby. The thing that will expand my possible exposure time and minimize setup difficulties. Because I started plate solving. Hey Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. Tonight something a little bit more different because I'm not going for any deep sky target tonight. I'm trying out some new equipment and some new methods and I'm really excited to for the target I'm, I've chosen today. No, nothing deep sky. Well, I guess it, it is deep sky. It's not a nebula, it's not a star cluster tonight. I'm gonna take a picture of a star. If you can remember back in the 80s, I think it was a thing that came up that you could buy a star and gift it to someone that, as a maybe to Christmas or on the birthdays. And this star naming, I don't know what's it called in English. I recently met someone who got a star for Christmas. And as I heard of that, I was searching it in Stellarium. And I'm gonna take a picture of the star tonight with the entire equipment, some new methods, I'm gonna tell you later about those. And I'm pretty sure that she will love it. The new piece of equipment tonight, I'm testing what, what, what better way to test a field flattener than to take an image of a star, right? So I got a field flattener, it's the Omegan 2 inch field flattener. A field flattener is a tool for astrophotography for telescopes, which corrects the chromatic aberration and the spherical aberration, common mis uh, errors that a telescope lens has. Even a triplet telescope like mine. So this one piece of equipment screws right into the camera with the correct distance to the sensor. And the field is completely flat, I've tried it before and I will show you uh, some images with the stars at the edges that they're not deformed which usually happens with the auto field flattener so this is the first piece of equipment and the second thing i was really excited about today i <coughs> i started listening to a podcast to the podcast of astrophotography by trevor jones the guy from astro backyard and i love this podcast to death and I hope I'm not annoying my neighbors out there. And in one episode he talked about plate solving. And I have heard of plate solving before, the method of taking a picture and then the software tries to work out where the where, where it is in the where it is in the sky. And I managed to connect my scope to the laptop to APT and I did my first plate solve tonight. You wanna know what it is? Let's check it out. Screen capture running. You can see my I the star hasn't come up yet behind the between my backyard, so uh, I just told the software to go to Andromeda Galaxy and it worked. And how that worked? Let's look at that. So I managed to connect my scope to the laptop. So just from the hand controller running cord with the old serial a serial cord and with a USB adapter into my laptop, the scope is connected. Everything here looks great while cars are passing by. And the thing is, I installed uh, All Sky Plate Solver. It's a free software you can download. Next picture done. I want to see what the stretched image looks like. If I'm getting enough data or not, I think that's... The moon is out at 80%. I don't know if I can get anything, anything about... Uh, from this picture, but let's try it out. I download the software. Plate solving is a way you take a picture and the software calculates where in the sky this picture was taken. It gives you the coordinates of the center of the image and if you can synchronize these coordinates with the mount which is tracking right now, the mount knows where it's pointing. So the usual three star or two star alignment of the Skywatcher mounts absolutely not necessary anymore. I installed the software 
and then he over here in Pinecraft, which is in Fijian APT, I told um, the I told APT where I installed the plate solver. Clicked on blind solve. It solved the image. It took the image. It solved it, and it I synchronized the coordinates. Then with the go to and aim option, I told it to go on Andromeda Galaxy, and with only three tries, I haven't pushed a single button on the hand controller. Andromeda right here in the center. This is awesome. Not worrying about finding an alignment star if one of them is behind the roof or behind the tree or if the hand controller gives you a weird name like Alpharas. I, I still don't know which star this is, but I don't need it anymore. So the software, it takes an image, looks where it is, then tries to move to the Andromeda Galaxy. It, and if you have the aim option enabled, it tries that up to five times until the uh, object of your, of your choice and you can choose from all the objects and custom objects which I'm gonna try tonight and it will take you right there so plate solving an awesome feature I love it to death already I had some troubles with um, uh, at the first try because I told APT where the installation was but as I restarted my PC <coughs> The plate solver had some problems with uh, some uh, data missing or missing data banks. I reinstalled it and now it works. So I hope I don't have to do that every time now uh, when I start the imaging process. Next term is finished. I see that PhD has slight problems here with the dithering. Oh god. So around the meridian, the scope is pointing pretty much upwards right now. This is a normal dither. I just hope that it will correct, correct itself and it looks like it does. I'm gonna bump the aggressiveness down a little bit to get the graph a little steady up. Next picture is running. Dithering complete. Nice. So if you never heard of it, point craft, plate solving, the best feature to use in APT if you don't want to do the star alignment. I love it. As you can see, the hand controller is not set on Andromeda. The software did it all, I love it. Out of the hand controller, of course, the cable to the mount and the little white cable here. While cars are passing by, I love it. The white cable goes. It's the standard uh, cable that comes with the mount, the Skywatcher mount. This is a, th a serial cable and with this little adapter here, I managed to collect, uh, connect it to the laptop, which is awesome. The field flattener I told you about, right between here, the extra, the ring here and the ring below it is everything you can, you can now see of it, because the field, the external field flattener is about this long, and fits right into the scope. So I'm gonna maybe show some pictures of it to that you can get a better understanding of how this thing actually looks so i'm gonna try to make a comparison image uh, maybe not a comparison image but an image where you can see where i will zoom to the edge of the frame so you can see that the stars at the edges are not deformed which would be the case without the flattener that they are perfectly sharp well, I certainly did not choose the best night for this one. The transparency looks really bad and high clouds are rolling in and out, which is very annoying. But who can say of themselves that they can choose the nights, right? I hope that the image of the star will look good. I think she will be very happy about that. Maybe I even send her a little poster about this one, I don't know. And if you watch this one, maybe I will. So. The image of the field flattener, oh, the part of the image that is important for the field flattener part of this video. Let's check this out, right? So let's go to the post commentary what I think about the result. Welcome to my Photoshop. I'm just gonna open the picture. So as you can see here right now, this is the one of the original light frames. No changes done yet. Just to show you the 
image is still at full resolution, 6000 by 4000, the uh, sensor size of my Canon 750D, and the field of view looks great, we got the wonderful double star in the middle here, it looks great. And the edges of the frame, let's look at those. So I'm gonna zoom down here. Usually without a field flattener, even a triple telescope has the spherical aberration. And the stars at the edges would be deformed and warped outside in the direction of the uh, edge down here. So. As you can see, they are not. They have maybe a little bit of a colorful halo around them, but really not much, not enough to see in an entire picture. And the stars over here look great. They are... Oh, didn't want to do that. The stars look great. They are round, they are sharp. Let's look at maybe top right here. These stars, and they all look very round, not oval shaped, which which would be the case if it if I didn't have the field flattener. So my opinion on this thing, it works. Back to the present. From the previous images I, th I saw of the flattener, it looks uh, they look real nice, and I hope that this one turned out as well. You just heard it, so you know better than me right now. The test images I've chosen tonight for the. Um, for the plate solving Andromeda Galaxy, I hope that they will turn out with 80% moon and these high clouds. <coughs> I really don't know how they will be if you don't see an image of Andromeda now. Um, you will soon see an explanation why in the form of text on the screen. And if you see the image and if you don't see the text on the screen, I think it was good enough to show it here and I don't like to shoot a video about something and show a crappy image at the end or just a overly stretched image which I'm not proud of so I only try to get the best images for this hobby and for these videos so I hope you like it. Okay, it's very cold, clouds, plate solving, taking an image of a star for a friend and the field flattener. Clear skies, guys. Clear skies, guys. I don't think that this works, so. Clear nights.